My name is Edward Ando, and uh, you are welcome to the maiden edition of our economics online courses. Today we are going to look at the broad concept of demand and supply, but within the next couple of minutes, we want to direct all efforts to look at the very basis of demand. That means we will be looking at the meaning of demand. We will move on to look at the various ways in which the concept of demand can be illustrated. When we are done with that, we will move to the next section to look at some of the causes that can affect demand as well as some demand shifters. Then the last one we will look at today is we will look at the law of demand and how we can explain the law of demand to buttress all the fact that we have already initiated concerning the demand shadows. To begin, in one way or the other, each one of us in every day, whether we put on our clothes, whether we buy food, whether we buy water, we are demanding because we have the desire, we have the willingness and we have the ability. And these desires, this willingness and our ability, they are backed by purchasing power. So the moment you buy anything, it means that demand in practice has taken place. So now how do we define demand? So we define demand as the various quantities of a particular commodity that a consumer is willing and able to purchase at their various prices. The willingness and the ability for a particular consumer to purchase the various units of a commodity at their various prices. That is demand. Now, when you look at the definition that we have given, we have some underlying concepts that no matter how you would define it, such key terms must be present. One major key term that in the definition we looked at is the willingness, the desire, and the ability. Most often, when we talk about the ability, then we are talking about the purchasing power, backing the willingness or backing the ability. So if only as a consumer you have desired or you are willing to consume a particular commodity and indeed you have the required income to buy that particular commodity, then we say that effective demand has taken place. If the ability or the willingness that you have is not backed by purchasing power, then it means that we don't have effective demand. We are only talking about demand. So now that you have the understanding about what demand is all about, we now move on to look at the various ways that we can use to demonstrate the concept of demand. And by that, we have three major ways that we use to demonstrate demand. We have the tabular form, which mostly we refer to it as the demand shadow. The next one that we have is the graphical method. And the last is the equation or the function method. So in the next couple of minutes, we are going to look at how each of these three main ways can be employed to explain the concept of demand. So we begin with the demand shadow. With the demand shadow, we say it is the tabular arrangement of the various prices with their corresponding quantities that a consumer is willing and able to purchase, as we have already talked about. So from the demand shadow that is displayed on your screen, you will realize that we have the price column and we have the quantity column. Where the price column begins from zero, and increases in multiples of two, and their corresponding quantities for that particular commodity, which is an apple, is also displayed. So anytime we have the prices of the various commodities that a consumer is willing and able to purchase in this tabular form, then we say that we have the demand shadow. That is one way. The other way is the graphical method. And with the graphical method, we mostly employ the drawing of two axes. 
the vertical axis, which takes the price of the commodity in question, and the horizontal axis, which takes the quantity demanded. So, from the data that we have been given, from the demand shadow that we have, we realize that the price of the commodity has been displayed on the vertical axis as it is displayed on your screen. For instance, if you have price zero, the quantity that will be demanded is 20 as it is displayed. At the price of two, you realize that the quantity that will be demanded is 18. If you have the price of four, the quantity that will be demanded is 16 in that order. So the information that we had earlier on, on the demand shadow, we can replicate the same thing on a graphical method as it is just displayed on the screen. So that is the second way that we can demonstrate demand. The last one, that is the last approach, or the last way that we can demonstrate the concept of demand is by using the equation method or the function method. And by the equation method, you need to remember this simplified equation or function. That is the traditional way that we used to employ or make a demand function or form a demand equation is this. QD is equal to A minus BP. That is the traditional way or the traditional formula for the demand equation or for the demand function. Now let's look at the meaning of these variables as they are displayed on the screen. QD talks about the quantity demanded of the particular commodity in question. When we talk about the A, the A talks about the intercept. In other words, where the demand curve crosses the horizontal axis. Put differently, at price zero, how many units will be demanded? That shows the A. And the B that you see there talks about the inverse of the slope of the demand equation or the demand curve the inverse of the slope of the demand curve. And the inverse of the slope of the demand curve is given by change in Q over change in P. That is change in the quantity demanded over change in the price of the commodity. And the P, of course, talks about the price of the commodity in question. So now that you understand the definitions of these key variables that we have employed in forming this formula, we are going to use the demand shadow that earlier on we displayed to form a demand function or demand equation. So let us start it all together. We need to first look for the value of B as indicated in the demand equation formula. Remember, however, that the B, we explained it as the change in the quantity divided by the change in the price. So you realize that from the demand shadow that we have up there or on the screen, the differences in the quantities are two throughout. So simply, and for short, the change in quantity is two. Similarly, if we come to the prices column, we will realize that the differences that we have in the prices as displayed on your screen is also two. However, you must remember that any two quantities that you will use in ascertaining the change in Q you have to use their corresponding prices in ascertaining the change in P. Therefore, in our change in Q, as you can see on the screen, we made it 20 minus 
18. And the change in price also is 0 minus 2. The reason we use 20 minus 18 and 0 minus 2 in that order is because the price that corresponds to quantity 20 is 0. And the price that corresponds to the quantity 18 is 2. Therefore, our B, its value is negative 1 from the change in Q over the change in P we have. The change in Q gave us positive 2 and the change in Q gave us negative 2. So positive 2 over negative 2 gave us negative 1. That is the value for our B. So from the demand equation that we displayed, we know the value for B. We now proceed on to look for the value of A. From the demand shadow, you realize that at price zero, the quantity demanded was 20. So automatically, the value of our A is 20. Remember how we defined the A, where we said that A talks about the value, that is the quantity demanded when the price is zero. So we can easily ascertain that from the demand schedule. Now, when we have the value of B to be negative 1 and the value of A to be 20, we go back to the original demand formula that we stated. Then we replace the negative 1 and the positive 20 by the B and the A. So in the original formula, which states the demand function to be QD equals A minus BP now becomes QD equals 20 minus 1P. The 1, negative 1, is the value of B. So we have now ascertained the demand equation. We now proceed to the next item which will give us the causes or the factors that affect demand. This is common to all of us. If you go to the market that you want to buy any particular item, be it apple, be it shirt, be it water, what are the several factors that you consider before you determine how many units you buy? We have put down some key factors that affect demand and that is displayed on your screen. The major factor that affects demand is the price of the commodity itself. More often than not, when the price of the commodity itself is high, we tend to buy less. But on the market, if you realize that the price of the commodity we so want to buy is very less, we tend to buy many. We tend to buy more units of that particular commodity. So we say that among the factors that affect demand, price of the commodity itself is one important factor. Another factor that affects demand is price of other related commodities. Price of other related commodities. That is the second major determinant of demand. Let's take for instance, if you are currently buying Milo, then it is not the price of Milo alone that will determine how many quantities of Milo you will buy. The price of Bon Vita, for instance, can also affect the quantity of Milo that you can buy. Why is it so? It is so because Milo and Bon Vita are related in a way they are substitutes meaning milo and bon vita they serve the same purpose so if the price of bon vita is high it means consumers will shift their attention from buying bon vita and they will more, buy more of the milo hence the quantity demanded for milo will increase the third factor that affects demand is the income level mostly when your income is high, all other factors remaining unchanged. You tend to buy more of the commodity. 
Conversely, when your income levels are low, you tend to buy less of the commodity in question, all other things remaining constant. We have other couple of factors that can equally affect demand, such as taste and preferences, such as the population. So we have several of them. There is one important thing you need to remember. That is, all the factors that we have listed, we can group them into two. The price of the commodity itself at one side, and all other factors, that is income, population, taste and preferences, all those factors are also grouped under one major category. If you take the price of the commodity itself out, then all other factors that we have just talked about are called demand shifters. They are called demand shifters. The reason they are called by that name is that any time any of these factors change, for instance, if your income change, you are going to have the demand curve shifting either to the left or to the right, depending on the direction of change in income. So, if your income increases, then the demand curve is going to shift to the right. If your income decreases, the demand curve will shift to the left. The diagram that is just displayed on your screen, if you look at it closely, we have two demand curves. We have D0 and we have D1. D0 is the original demand curve and D1 is the new demand curve. You realize that the price is the same and with the D0 demand curve, it has corresponding quantity Q0. And with the D1 demand curve, which is the new demand curve, we have its corresponding quantity, Q1. Anytime the income level increases at the same price, the quantity demanded is going to increase, as the diagram demonstrates. So, to summarize everything, we have said that apart from the price of the commodity itself, all other factors that may affect demand are altogether called demand shifters. When they change, the demand curve will either shift to the left or it will shift to the right. The last thing we talk about is the law of demand. And the law of demand, I guess we all are familiar with, which says that at a higher price, less of the commodity in question will be demanded and at a lower price we will have more of the commodity to be demanded that is the law of demand all other factors remaining constant or unchanged remember not to ignore that final phrase which says all other factors remaining unchanged the other factors that we are holding constant in this situation is the demand shifters. So when we are referring to the law of demand, we are interested in only two variables. That is the price of the commodity itself and the quantity demanded of the commodity. Other factors that affect demand do not come to play. We don't regard them. We don't consider them. We only look at the relationship between the price of the commodity itself and the quantity demanded of the commodity. So you can look at the demand shadow displayed on your screen. Look at the orderly arrangement of it. You will realize that the price started from zero, it increased to two, it increased to four in that order. But as the price is increasing, you realize that the quantity demanded also falls in one particular order, falling from 20 
to 18, to 16, to 14, to 12, and to 10. So you realize the inverse relationship. As the quantity decreases, the price increases. And that is exactly what the law of demand talks about. We hope that you have found it interesting. And in the next series, we shall be looking at other concepts of demand which this very section did not capture. So thank you very much. As I earlier said, my name is Edward Ando, and we hope to meet you on our next lecture cast.